fun greetings this day, March 15th, 2021. March 15, 315 reminds us of 1 Peter 315, where we're told to sanctify Christ as Lord in our hearts and always be ready and prepared to give a reason for the hope we have to anyone who asks us for that reason and to do so with gentleness and respect. So 315, March 15th is Apologetics Day. So happy Apologetics Day. Apologia in Greek just means to give a defense for what you believe and why you believe it. You know, for some of us, we look at the created universe and we say, how did this stuff get here? You know, the universe is composed of matter, energy in space and time. And the scientific consensus is that it had a beginning and it couldn't create itself. So whatever created it had to be timeless, spaceless, immaterial, extremely different kind of power and enormously intelligence. What kind of a being does that sound like to you? Sounds like God to me. But uh, anyway, it's called the cosmological argument, but you can break it down further and say, you know, what about life? What about that simple cell of a grade of grass or a blade of a corn? Uh, that simple cell gets more complex all of the time. We find out it has a library of information in it. And information requires intelligence to create and to understand, and now we have design, which seems to require a designer. And now instead of the cosmological argument of beginnings, we are looking at a teleological argument. Do you ever talk to people from a different world religion, perhaps Israeli or perhaps Muslim? And you talk to them about Jesus Christ risen from the dead and that he is Lord, and they reject that. They reject that understanding of God. And now you're into why do you believe what you believe? about the nature of God. Why do you believe what you believe about the nature of God and Christ and the Holy Spirit? And now we're doing theology. If you work at a major university or even a college or a trade school, um, even in high school or junior high, or when you first discovered there was no Santa Claus, people have questions and we need to be thoughtful Christians that transform lives today on campus and culture tomorrow. And that's the organization I work with, Ratio Christi, the reason of Christ. Christ is the actual reason for rationality, according to the Lagos as unpacked in John's gospel, uh, the first chapter. You may find that exciting. I know what I certainly do. Well, if you believe that things and major ideas in the university are staying constant, you haven't been staying up on culture. We've gone from a radical modernism that believes everything can be figured out by science and scientism and uh, cause and effect to a radical kind of post-modernism to a radical kind of critical theory where everything is about issues of power, not even about truth. We've gone from a meaning relativism to a relativism of morals to a relativism of just about everything except power and these changes are happening at warp speed. If you'd like to keep up with that and know what you believe and why you believe it, you wanna be involved in the ministry of apologetics. Perhaps you're not just encountering uh, naturalism and critical theory, but perhaps you have friends from other countries like the People's Republic of China, for instance, or like from Japan and Buddhism or uh, a Hindu country like India or uh, Sri Lanka. And you realize you're talking about different things that are very important to people, but why do they believe what they believe and why is what you believe uh, true or not true and what can you learn from others? When Ratio Christi, we believe that there are scientific reasons for believing that the gospel and the Christian worldview is true and that Jesus is true. There are historical reasons and there are philosophical reasons, probably the best answer to the problem of pain is the Christian answer where Christ takes the problem of our sinfulness and our pain up close and personal in his body on the cross and conquers death. But there are other answers as well. A lot of our cities this last year have been plagued by anarchy and frustration over abuses of power, and people have different sorts of answers. 
but they need an answer that gives them real hope and real change, that people don't always have to be oppressors and people don't always have to be oppressed, but they can be changed. They can be forgiven and they can be forgivers and liberators. But this is gonna be a new kind of message. People need help to understand medical ethics. It's not just if it works, do it, but what brings dignity, what brings freedom and human flourishing and what brings fears and phobias? And what about the balance between work and rest? How do you settle that as a grad student that's working for your major professor and driven to do that research in that one area where nobody else has discovered? Do you have a, a rhythm to your life between work and rest? Are you able to relish God's beautiful creation? God says he is light. Are you able to take time to enjoy things like the Northern Lights or to take a stroll beside a quiet stream and have your soul be refreshed? I hope you can. Have you ever been to a 4th of July fireworks and seen an explosion of light? Well, you know, that's our universe. The consensus, as I mentioned earlier, is that it had a beginning, but I've never seen an explosion of light and beauty uh, break out and expand for more than uh, a couple of seconds at a fireworks celebration. Usually it spreads out fast and dissipates or it collapses back upon itself rather rapidly. I've never seen something blow up and keep expanding for a thousand years or 10,000 years <laughs> in a finely balanced gravitational constant. You know, design in these cells needs a designer, but what about life after death? Have you thought about that? It seems like there's three major views. One is annihilation, where everything goes to meaninglessness and heat death along with the universe or to afterlife or to some kind of reincarnation. Perhaps you're skeptical or even cynical about all of it and believe that we're all, we can't know anything and uh, we're just locked inside Mio's and uh, Mr. Smith's matrix. <laughs> um, well, wherever you are, I know that you're asking questions, questions about truth and meaning and human flourishing. And you know that we need to have answers that we can live by that make moral and meaning sense out of our lives so we can serve each other and we can help each other to learn and ask those questions and grow in the understanding of truth, meaning, and love. And that's why today I'm wishing you a happy Apologetics Day, March 15th. Keep questioning authority. <laughs> Authorities are saying all kinds of things with bluster and confidence, and it seems to be sound and fury often signifying little to nothing. But keep searching, keep asking, because the truth is out there, as I used to say on the X-Files. And we believe that the truth has a capital T, and it's rooted and grounded in the person and work of Jesus Christ, who came to this earth 2,000 years, conquered death on a cross, that we might be able to be forgiven and restored and given hope even beyond this life and meaning. And he is the reason uh, the Ratio Christi, the reason for a reason itself. I hope you'll get to know him today and that you'll actually enjoy uh, being asked hard questions and investigating answers, the truth, wherever it takes you. So happy Apologetics Day and uh, all the best this mid-March.